Hello, um, my name is Jacob Barnett, and I just wanted to present you with a quantum mechanics problem that I thought was really fun. It's just a really clever thing. So, one thing that you can get almost immediately from the Schrodinger equation, if I'm in a 3D particle in a box, the energy is simply going to be, um, let me write the subscripts first, this is nx squared plus ny squared, nz squared, 2ma squared, h bar squared, a is the length of the box, um, this, this is a cubical box in three dimensions. Uh, a is the length of the box, m is the mass of the box, h bar is Planck's constant, I don't know if you can see the bar, and nx, ny, nz, those are integers that are greater than zero, ny, nz greater than zero, and they're integers, they're positive integers, okay? So, one thing that you can try to determine is when is this spectra degenerate? So, this spectra is degenerate when I have some energy, say E1, equal to some energy E2, with 1 being a different state than 2. So, basically, that means that state 1 is different than state 2 by permutation. So, for example, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 3, 2 are the same in my sense, but 1, 2, 3 is not the same as 1, 2, 4. So we want to find out when it's degenerate. Now this is something that you can try to program into your favorite language, such as MATLAB or Fortran or Python, but really what you can do, it, it, it just takes a while. I mean, you have to use several loops. I mean, you have to use like three whiles or fours, and you also have to use some ifs in order to cycle through. Um, basically, you just make a vector 1, 4, 9 of all the squares, and you just add up the squares of it, and you have to do it in such a way such that the numbers you choose are not going to be permutations of each other, and then you have to see when they're the same number, and it's just a pain. So, there is just a better way to do it. So, consider the following sum. Um, let me erase this because it's not as good. Consider the sum of this polynomial. N equals 1 to capital N. And let's say I cube it. Cubing it, I'll just put it in three dimensions. So this sum basically is just x, x4, x9, x16, I can keep doing this all day, x25, all the way up to x capital N squared, and this is cubed. And basically what when I cube this, I get terms like I'll get an x cubed term, and I'll get a term like x to the sixth, and the coefficient ends up being 3. And I get something like 3x9, if I'm taking large enough numbers, of course, and plus, etc. I'm assuming that n is sufficiently large to get those coefficients. So, in order to, well, let's look at this carefully. So, this 3. This is a sum of three squares, this one. This is a sum of three squares, two. This is a sum of three squares. I just took the term here, the term here, and the term here. This one, this should be two squared, two squared, one squared, etc. And this is just combinations of three sums of three squares. So basically what this the coefficients tells us is the number of times I hit this sum of squares. So these things, in a sense, are going to give me the degeneracy. However, this is more, it's not really a natural form of degeneracy. It also includes accidental degeneracies, which can just come apart from taking cyclic permutations like 1, 2, 3, 3, 1, 2, etc. So now let's look at this closely. Let's try to interpret what the coefficients mean and when it's actually degenerate or when the degeneracy is just an accident. Suppose the coefficient of x to the m is 1. It's clear that it's non-degenerate spectra because there's this, this would be something like 3 squared plus 3 squared plus 3 squared that corresponds to this. I can only get that in one way. If it's 0, it's also clearly non-degenerate since the energy, in a sense, doesn't exist. Um, 2, it turns out that this never happens. 3. Now... Let's look at this. So, if let's first assume that we have a triplet and it's a unique triplet. So I have A, B, C. 
Now, first thing, if I assume A is B is C, then the coefficient is going to be 1. If I have A is equal to B but not C, then I'll get three pairs. I'll get A, A, C, A, C, A, C, A, A. And so the coefficient should be 3. And if they're not the same, then I'll get six pairs, A, B, C, C, A, B, B, C, A, and A, C, B, and then B, A, C, and then C, B, A. You will get those six combinations for those three indices. So you will get a six. So in other words, if it's a non-degenerate spectra, or if the degeneracy is an accident, then it should give us a 1, it should give us a 3, or it should give us a 6 in front of the coefficient, or a 0, of course. And if it gets us anything else, then it's going to be a degeneracy. But these ones, there is a chance it's a non-degenerate spectra. These ones, it's clear it must be a degenerate, but what happens if I get a 3 or a 6? Now, the 3, when I look at the 3, I can get it in two ways. I can either get it by this AAC, ACA, CAA, or I can have something like I have a pair X, 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 Y, 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 Z, 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 and I can take these, I can sum them, I can square them, and I'll get 3X squared is 3Y squared is 3Z squared, since they have to add it to the same number. And since these are positive integers, that implies that x is y is c, which is a contradiction because this one implies that the number is 1. So 3 must be a non-degenerate spectra. Now what happens if I get a 6? Well, 6 we can't quite determine because 6, I could get something like 1, 1, 7, 1, 5, 5. These are two different pairs. They give up to 6, and you can see there's two 1s, two 5s. I can sum them up. I square them. And they both give me 51. So 6 in general, it's not easy to determine. So 6 in a sense is sort of a bad number. And what we can do with the 6 is we can just look at simple. We can just look at some of things like 1, 2, 3. Or maybe 2, 3, 1, etc. I can just look at these triplets. And... Uh, no, 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 no. I, I don't want them to be the same. I don't want them to be the same sets. So I can just look at each of these triplets. I can just see what they sum up to and square to if they're each not the same. And then I can pair them with the coefficients of the polynomials that comes out. And I assume that n is sufficiently large. And then we will get a result. Now, by n is sufficiently large, what do I mean by that? Suppose I want to know the coefficients all the way up to some number, capital M. Then I will need to run this for at least the floor of square root of m. This should be n. Because otherwise, you know, if you have less than that, you're not going to get all the terms. And if you have more than that, you're just going to, you know, get other terms which you don't need. So if you're only going up to capital M, you only have to run this for this many times. And this polynomial, you can either compute it by hand, or you can just use a computer to do that. Um, in this case, um, you can calculate this up to 51, and using a computer is easier. So, okay. Um, I hope this was a fun tutorial on a fun quantum mechanics problem. Um, thank you for watching.